It is 200 years since Emily Bronte wrote her only novel here on the Yorkshire Moors. But even today, it is one of the most celebrated pieces of English literature. So far in this documentary, we have observed the major characters in the plot. But Bronte's story is about so much more than the tale of Heathcliff and Catherine Earnshaw. Today, in part four, we will be investigating the minor characters who could so easily have been lost in the maze of English writing. They deserve recognition as well, and this is their story. It's said that novels generate different levels of acclaim based on their minor characters. Wuthering Heights is a perfect example of this. It has been hu hugely successful due to minor characters such as Hareton Earnshaw. Hareton Earnshaw is viewed as quite a simple character by many, but his sole desire is to be a success. He struggles with this throughout the book, yet by the end he has overcome his demons. An irony, as supposedly stronger characters have failed to do this. Hareton Earnshaw is quite an interesting character in a number of ways. He actually overcomes his personal difficulties, and in what overall is quite a melancholy work, he, he represents a glimmer of light and hope. This may in some part be reflected by the continuation of the light-dark motive in Heathcliff's description of his charge as gold used as paving stones. There are numerous metaphorical implications in this sentence, gold shines brightly. This could mirror light in the darkness. Paving stones are trodden on, a metaphor for the abuse which Hareton suffers. Finally, gold used as paving stones will never show its true worth, can be linked to Hareton's appearance, not to what he seems on the surface. The crucial thing about Hareton is how he changes, probably based on an illiterate friend of Emily Bronte. His character could be argued to be the only one whose personality significantly alters. Take this passage for example. A well-made athletic youth, good-looking in feature, and stout and healthy, but his attire garments befitting his daily occupations of working on the farm. Still, I thought I could set his features a mind owing better qualities than his father ever possessed. This reflects the way in which Hareton is viewed perhaps better than any other passage. On the surface, he is rugged, handsome man, yet seemingly with appearance of benefit befitting a labourer. As Bronte explores Hareton further, the suggestion that he is unkind character is dispelled altogether and better quality shine through. This change is shown by Bronte. At first he is described as gruff and uncommunicative, but by the end he, his brightened mind is at the fore. A similar change is evident in young Catherine Earnshaw. At first she is seen as rude, but as with Hareton she is transformed and it is supposed that she will live happily ever after. Cathy, like many others in the novel, is stubborn. She continues to visit Linton despite this being banned, and she was forever exploring the area around the Grange. This stands her in good stead later on, however, when she helps Hareton and nullifies Heathcliff's vengeance. The first thing which Bronte relates to the reader about Cathy is, is how she is a sunshine in a desolate house. A continuation of the light dark motif. This almost is the opposite of how Hareton is described. The fact that she is just like Hareton and changes her persona is just one of the many parallels between the two in the novel. And now to possibly the least influential character in the novel. Linton Heathcliff, detested by many who engage with the book, may actually be wrongly interpreted. Possibly the word comes to mind when describing Linton is wet. He, is, he has very similar characteristics to his mother, Isabella, along with a complex persona. He is manipulative and greedy, but also manipulated and weak. Linton's character is best reflected in his first meeting with Cathy. He is at first the peeved child, desiring to be loved, yet after being rejected by Cathy, he becomes angry and aggressive. This changing personality makes him one of the most disliked characters in the novel. However, Linton can be described as shy, Tom to desire for love, and a fear of a seemingly inevitable fate. Over the years, many critics have argued that the brilliance of Fontaine's novel lies in its minor characters. In 
some ways they represent a happy ending, in others, the continuation of a doomed tale. Wuthering Heights as a novel could live without them, but as a tale of twisted intrigue, betrayal and love, it is far, far better for their inclusion. Dark light motive. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, Michael! <laughs> Ayrton Earnshaw is quite an interesting character in a number of ways. He overcomes his personal difficulties and was actually. <laughs> Michael! For God's sake! Sorry. That was me. That was me. <laughs> this may in some part be reflected by the continuation of the light dark motive in Heathcliff's description of his charge as gold used as paving stones. Michael! Michael! <laughs> Cathy, like many others in the novel, is quite stubborn. She continues to visit Linton, despite this being banned. What was your You're back! Cathy, like many others in the novel. <laughs> what are you doing, Michael? <laughs> Michael, I think you need to leave. <laughs> Linton's character is best reflected in his meeting with Cathy. He at first is the peevish child desiring to be fondled. Yet, after a palm off... I can't say palm off, Michael. You've got to change that. <laughs> it is often said that a, uh, a novel... Take this passion for example. <laughs> Let's just go in for a close-up. <laughs> there it is, that's, that's what's causing us all the trouble. It's <laughs> busted the door. <laughs> and it's all down to a tuna sandwich. A well-made, athletic youth, good-looking in feature, and stout and healthy, but attired in garments befit befitting his daily occupations of working on the farm. Still, I thought I could detect his physiognomy. <laughs> I can't read it, my God. <laughs> I'm going to leave. Take this passage, for example. A well-made, athletic youth, good-looking in feature, and stout and healthy, but attired in garments befit befitting his daily oh, I could tell you going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Better that's what you've done, you stupid